Oh, welcome back to the Humagoo Show. Mr. Mark Cameron, I got you, buddy. On the way to the top, great song. And we are sitting there chatting about Packers and Vikings in the background. Oh, my God, all the Brett Farr passes and all the kicks. And I feel so bad for you guys. I mean, really, I, I do. I mean, there was a point where, you know, you want to see your friends be happy, too. <laughs> Well, you know, as if there wasn't enough stress in watching sports, now they're going to make it legal to gamble on top of it. Uh, I, I, I don't need the stress. I, I'll just I'll record the thing, and then somebody tell me later if they won. You know, forget uh, it. I, you know what? I'm totally. My friend and I were texting before. Do you realize for baseball, three hundred million dollars? Why don't you just put that as a quarter of a billion? for a contract of one person. Let's start getting real with this money. You know, I was in San Diego, and uh, the homeless were all around the ballpark, you know. If you were somebody on top watching this, it's like the have and the have-nots are so bad now. And I'm a sports fan, but I can't stomach it either. Um, oh, you know, if a little of that money could trickle over to the music business, I think we'd all be or much happier. Or everything, and we just follow along. I'm season ticket holder, so. Anyways... We digress on that, but we have fun about the Vikings and the Panthers. And every time everybody comes to my show, Minnesota D. Miller, I love to play the Viking horn. Oh, I do have it here, you know. But uh, you know, I can't help that stuff. By the way, it's going right now too for you. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I, I we just need the Packers to soften up the Bears so we might have a chance. I that's all. I, that's all I'm asking for. I uh, will have a little unity, my friend, on that. Okay. Let's get back to some of the jams now. Here's the other one that's rocking the charts. Back street, back seat boogie. Uh, that back one seat boogie. Yeah, back seat boogie, yeah. Tell us about that great flick here, that great jam you got going. Well, it's funny. You know, when we play that song live, I usually will, if it's a kind of a mixed audience with young and old, I'll tell the young kids, I'll say, hey, if your parents told you they never did this, they're lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my, when, I, when I came up with the image of this guy stepping out the back door of a bar and all the bumpers are bouncing up and down, I thought, there it is. That's, that's the song right there. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I suppose us being older, you know, the vehicles and all that, it was a different time. That's how you found everybody hooked up and went places and... That's how we hanged out, you know, not this text. Well, yeah. You know, oh, that's I'm, a, I'm, I'm so old. I mean, maybe if you did that in the backseat of a car, now the airbags would go off or something. I, I don't know. Well, they definitely have a pitch, you know, <laughs> anyways, that's too funny. Oh, we love to talk about cool stuff. All right, buddy, let's just rock this. Cause uh, again, we just like to crank the tunes, talk a little bit and present your jam. So here we go. Back seat boogie. <laughs> Well, my girl said she's bored And just hanging around the house She says we gotta go somewhere It's just time to get out So we roll up on this club And the damn where she go She was right here just a second ago I don't understand Tell me how can it be My little girl get away from me Well I stepped out the back door I was looking all around Tell me why these bumpers Why they're moving up and down I'm a full-size car, baby I ain't no subcompact But you treat me like a Chevy It's like he got a Cadillac I didn't understand, but now I see She has up a plan to do the backseat boogie Backseat boogie Backseat boogie But now I see She had us have a plan To do the backseat boogie
Mr. Mark Cameron, thanks for coming back to the Humagoo, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and one of the cool things when I'm on the show, uh, Mark can't hear the jams, and we we just talk. You know, I hear uh, so many cool things to chat with my friends here. I call everybody my friend on the show and coming on and and all the good karma that you guys do. And and briefly talk with D. Miller. You know, D. Miller is one of the greatest supporters of my show and so many people. And I, I mentioned your wife, friends with her, and, you know, and just great. That's the blues community, you know, everybody down there. Uh, the blues, uh, you have that fest that you go to um, in January. And uh, did you represent uh, Minnesota? We did. We, yeah, we uh, the Mark Cameron Band represented Minnesota at the International Blues Challenge. I was January of 2016, so just uh, a little short of two, three years ago now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had such a good time. It was such a good experience for us that, you know, we'll probably compete again. But the, the blues bands in Minnesota are all so good, it's it's never a given that you're going to be able to, to go down there. you got to kind of earn your way there. Yeah, you have quite a community because I've been following that since I learned about that, and that's one of the neat things about my show. I was never, I didn't know about those things happening, and like the contest, you have so much time to set up and go and play, and it's uh, it's it's almost like a a pit stop, should I say, of bands. Yeah, it's it's all timed, and you're judged on on everything you do from the minute you set foot on the stage. So you've got ten minutes to change over from the band that competed prior and you've got to be ready to go. No sound check, no nothing, just play. And then you do 20 or 25 minutes, depending on what night it is. And, uh, judges are sitting right in front of you. And it's, uh, it's a big deal because whoever wins that gets a recording contract and all, you know, all kinds of festival work. And, uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it sounds like you guys are a team coming down because when you describe that, it's almost you know you have to have all your nuts and bolts and cords and ready to go when it's time. So that, it, you know, it's not just a little campy weekend. You know what I mean? You come on down and crank. This is a different entity of the show, should I say. All your team. Well, imagine 250 bands from all over the world. I mean, we obviously got a little bit invested when we're traveling from Minnesota to yeah. memphis but you've got people coming from croatia from mm. you know everywhere on the planet and you can imagine the expense involved with with them getting to memphis to compete in that thing so it's uh it's a lot of fun i mean you're up and down beale street there's 17 or 18 clubs that are having these bands play all at once wow what a great time yeah and i got to interview lawrence lebo down there and um Bridget Purdy, too, live on the show, and they gave me some. So I, I've learned so much from from you great people, and you know, life and fun and uh, good stuff and the blues. Uh, riding, riding the rails. Let's rock that one. Tell us a little about that one. That's oh, I love the kind of train. They got an old train going in Wisconsin here. They got the old 150 old big beast rocking it on the rails around here right now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh... That big boy locomotive that came through here a while back, and we got some some video of that. But um, riding the rails is kind of a song about perseverance. It's it's a song about you know trying to keep the thing rolling when things aren't necessarily going the best, but you you just keep pushing ahead, and that's that's really what that song's about. And it's every band has a train theme song, and that one's ours. 
I love it. I love it. I love the trains, and, the, and that's so much Americana, and the blues, and all that good stuff. Johnny Cash, and, you know, love that. All right, my friend, riding the rails, and we'll be right back, Mr. Mark Cameron. Thank you. Yeah. 